I thought the 41 was big, but that's 47. That is incredible. Holy smokes, that's the biggest bass I've ever seen in Victoria. Now tomorrow brings the fourth round straight in this giant quadruple header that starts the 2022 season this year. And there's a really cool element to it in that it is actually my first ABT Bass Round tournament ever. It'll be on Lake Glen Maggie and it's actually only 20 minutes away from where I live. But due to water levels, every time that I've tried to get into this system, I haven't been able to float the boat. So this will be the first time that I'll also fish the system. There's no doubt that I'll be out of my depth in terms of bass fishing, but I think it's going to be a great opportunity to learn and meet some guys in that freshwater scene. I was getting them deep, the sun was up. So you need you need the sun up to get them deep? Well, not always, but like I just felt like they were just, they weren't shallow when that sun was there. Like they were just looking for shade, you know, especially at the bridge on the pylons and stuff. That last boating session at Gippsland Lake, so a few days ago, was really rewarding. It was great to follow the Pry family around on free fish, then get out with Tommy Wood as my non-boater on day two and really watch him carve the field from the back of the boat and finish in that top 10 after donating on day one. Oh, oh, dude, dude, that is so Holy, oh my God. We have to, that is fucking giant. That is a giant dude, have you? That is a fucking giant. <laughs> Look at that beast. Weather was challenging and the conditions were tough and even though we had a poor result on day one which meant the final result was never going to be great there were smiles everywhere the drinks were cold the environment was great and the laughs were awesome it really did reinforce to me that the main reason for coming to these tournaments is the people and if you happen to catch a fish that's a bonus vlog style i can make fun but see how he just copied my shot it's going to be in the dialogue he's video post, he's going to post his first it'll be in a dialogue right. video and uh <laughs> <laughs> it's now official. Sure. Uh, it's going to be a case of who. Alrighty, anglers, let's kick off the 2022 Dialogue. I literally started my comp again at about 11.45. I pulled up to that same deep spot. That was chaos. That was proper chaos. Bro. I'm shaking. I am shaking. Booyah. It felt like they were just looking for shade, you know, especially at the bridge on the pylons and stuff. We're going to turn and burn as soon as this is done, dude. Yeah. Be ready for me. Let's get his head up, just go. Alright, Hey man, how you doing? I am so pumped for tomorrow. It's uh, it's uh, something I'm looking forward to. Uh, congrats on the win. Cheers, mate. Yeah, good little good start to the year. Sort of took a bit of a not a gamble, I suppose. I just sort of stuck to my guns, and it sort of paid off, which is good. Yeah, it's good when good when it all works out <laughs> your way, I suppose. Yeah, totally right. <laughs> <laughs> what what time are you looking to get on the water? Try and, we'll try and get to the ramp about six, I'd say. Okay. Um, but yeah, we won't probably leave until daylight, which is, you know, half past six, I guess. So yeah, it's kind of going to be one of those days, mate. It's kind of, it's, for us, you know, trying, just trying to get a feel for what they're going to eat or where they're sitting at least, you know, so. Yeah. Um, so well, I've got, I think I've got 10 rods on the deck with 10 different things on the throw. Just a, a good solid fish in here is about two kilos, you know, 40, 45 centimetres, so yeah, be, be prepared, I guess, to, to have a little bit of a tussle. Yeah, okay, gotcha. Okay. Sure. Sweet man, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, yeah, it should be good, mate. What got you into fishing? How long has it been a family thing? Yeah, yeah, so my dad, my dad is obviously the, the most, the biggest um, influence for my fishing. He, um, he always tells story a bit, stories about me being two years old and put a life jacket on me and take me down the river fishing. 
Um, we'd fish for yellow belly and Murray cod. Uh, I grew up at uh, a town called St George in southwest Queensland on the Blonde River and I was always up and down the riverbank with Dad from, from two. He started taking me out at two and yeah, just progressed um, my fishing from then. I, I've stayed out there fishing and hunting since, um, yeah, until I was 18. Are you, are you the only family member that tournament fishes? Uh, yeah, so I guess I guess the big thing with my family, Dad and, and my cousins always say too, there's, there seems to be like a family bloodline of fishermen because my grandfather, Titch, he um, introduced Dad to fishing and then Dad passed it on to me. But um, my two cousins as well, uh, one's fairly popular in the fishing scene, Carl, um, Carl Jockamson. He's uh, doing really well over in the States. Um, I'm tournament fishing in Australia and um, Chris George owns fishing bits in Toowoomba. So yeah, there's a, there's a bit of a line of fishermen in our family um, on, on all sides. So yeah. Do you guys fish together often? We, yeah. Yeah, so we, we try and fish together uh, as much as we can. Obviously it's difficult with Carl overseas now um, and obviously Chris runs a business too, but whenever we get together it's, it's a ball of fun. Um, yeah, we're kind of like brothers, I guess. We just sort of, you know, muck around and, and just enjoy time together and do a lot of, you know, a lot of the things we love. Like we gr we grew up, um, you know, going to visit each other and fish or hunt or that sort of stuff. And you know, we, we may not see each other um, sometimes for a while, um, but yeah, it's, it's always the same, which is good. Fish maybe 100 metres, go a little bit further, 100 metres, 100 metres. See what pops up on the sound. I think it's more so just sort of trying to identify what they're eating, where they're sitting, depth. And you usually lock off the pole like you're doing here now on an angle and then take the boat down. Oh, that looks good. Red fin. That might have been a bass. Uh, there's a red fin there. Yeah. It's got this. Welcome. Poor red fin comps on. There's going to be a few of those, I reckon. Did you get a few at uh, Blue Rock as well? Yeah. How cool are they? I like the little black spot just there. I reckon these look, make them look like little flames. Yeah. They look like a flame red. They're a deadly looking fish and they're delicious. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Never knew that until yesterday. Oh, did you? Is it yesterday your first time eating them? Yeah, the boys. <coughs> Same pack. No 50 gram of there. Okay. Is he out a little bit, Dave, or is he close to the bank? Sorry? Is he out a little bit or close to the bank? No, right on. I guess under the tree. Well, you got the ready, really. So the plan this morning is to sort of run and gun? Yeah, pretty much. I'll just fish, I'll just fish a couple of a couple of hundred metres or a, or a hundred metres of bank and just get a feel for it. Just I'll fish a whole heap of different stuff, but just to get a feel for where they're sitting and just try and see if I can see any different types of bait or... Oh. A langer fish. <laughs> oh. Yeah, but just, just just take the day as it comes and get a feel for what what might be happening down there. Do you have a particular technique that you like the best? Or the oh, most? I think for down here, I, I like fishing really small uh, in, in comparison to what we throw in Queensland. Mm. I'm normally throwing like a... Oh yeah, I can see what they're eating. I just saw a hit. Oh yeah. yeah the little... But like I was saying, um, in Queensland we throw like five eight ounce heads, three three quarters probably as heavy as we go a lot of the time. Mm. So you know down here you're throwing one inch plastics to two inch plastics to imitate the bait fish because they don't have bonies or gar, and you're generally fishing fairly shallow. So it's, it's different, but I like that real light finessey sort of deal. Mm. 
just feels right to me. Um, a lot of the, a lot of the, um, yeah, fishing in Queensland is just chucking wine. So the redfin like smell anyway. Found that out. Here he comes. Something's coming up, yeah. Oh, that was pretty cool to watch. <laughs> and then watch him disappear too, he swim back down. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the coolest. Well, at least you now know, right? How long have you been guiding for? I started guiding at the end of 2017. Um, it took a long time to get all my certifications and my boating spec and, and do all the things that I needed to do, but it was just a one-step process, do one thing, one thing. Uh, and we ended up getting there. It took, took about 12 months to get set up. Um, it wasn't overly expensive to get set up, but um, it just took a lot of time. So I started 2017 and been guiding ever since and the momentum's been building with clientele. I've had a lot of return customers, which has been fantastic. And um, because of COVID, it's been hard with international visitors. Uh, at the very start, we, we started to get a, a really good um, international client base and, and interstaters as well. But because of COVID, it sort of That's just shut us down. We've just been doing a lot of local ready. work. Ooh, that's a bad oh yeah. That's... So this is at least 25. You're gonna have to upgrade. My, I guess my <laughs> expertise is sort of based around Australian bass. Um, I, I love chasing Australian bass, and there's so many different ways to catch them in different seasons as well. So I don't just off, offer bass. I do yellow belly. Uh, the international visit, visitors like chasing Saratoga because they're a renowned sport fish, they like to jump and they, they can be sight cast. Um, but they're the three big species, yellow belly, Australian bass and Saratoga. So basically Aussie, Aussie freshwater. Pretty so much, you, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Stuff as well. I, stay, I stay away from the barra, I let the professionals do the barra. <laughs> <laughs> In a week, how often are you on the water? Uh, I'd probably average three days a week um, on the water. Um, some weeks are obviously busy than others, especially around holiday time. Summer holidays are really busy. Um, but yeah, even even through the winter months when it's really cold, people still want to learn how to you know catch fish in the cool cooler months. And um, but I would I'd, I'd average three days a week. My biggest advice is move when you got to move, or move move to find them and keep moving forward as such. Um, and just stop or slow down when you have to. So for example, you're moving, all of a sudden you come across some fish. Don't spend too much time on them, but if they don't, if they're if they gonna bite, they'll usually bite fairly quickly, um, but don't waste too much time on them because you can lose so much time on unresponsive fish. Mm. So keep moving until you find something that's responsive and then yeah, slow down then and try and catch a few. But as soon as they stop, and you can still see them, if they don't want to eat, they, they won't eat. So just keep moving, you can always come back to them again later on. And if I think to myself, hey, I want to come back to this spot, but they're not biting now. Give them a break, come back. An hour or two? Yeah, just give them enough time. Just for even that water temperature change, um, just enough time for them to settle down a little bit. And will they, uh, if I get a couple out of the same school, Mm. Well, they shut down. A, a lot of the time, if, if you didn't have to release them, um, if you didn't have to release them, they'd, they'd go in your live well and they wouldn't shut down, like they generally keep biting, but the fact that you're releasing them back into the school you got them from can stress them out. And basically they release a signal to the rest and the others won't bite. Um, it's almost like they're dobbing on you or telling on you. It's on their mates. Yeah. <laughs> But again, you can leave them, come back to them later, and that 
that stress dissipates and later on they'll be ready to go. So, Is it rare that you, you'll pull five from the same pack? Oh, when they're really fired up, sometimes that temperature's high or something's going on and they're just super aggressive and they don't care, They'll sometimes you just keep catching them. Yep. I've had days where you can catch 200 fish from the same school. But more often than not, usually you'll get, commonly you'll just get one and then the, the others will clue on, depends how hardly pressured they are. And then, um, yeah, other times you can get half a dozen and then they'll stop. But it's more the fact of you letting them go normally when they'll start shutting down. I'm just after one big bite. That's all. I don't want any other bite than just one big one. It's a good shot. Got him? Yeah, he's on. Oh, that's a nice fish. Carp. Carp. Uh-oh, I might lose this tackle. I saw it, seen his head just move a little, I'm like, oh no! <laughs> no, nice. It's a big fish. They were bass, they lost it. They're, they're bass. Yeah, they're bass. I dropped the gulp down, followed it down, followed it up, went peck, and then just went tunk, and the rod tip went, oh, what, well, he's got it. And lifted, and he, and he come up good, and it was a big carp. Yeah. Tell me why you chose to come to Glen Maggie. We wanted to have two bass events to lure anglers from up north to come down south. And Blue Rock was always beautiful lay, plenty of fish, not huge ones. Glen Maggie has been stocked for longer. It has bigger fish in it. So there might be as many fish, but there might be some bigger fish in this lake. We're not expecting as many fish as a Blue Rock because a Blue Rock is hyper stocked with bass. This one's been stocked for a long time. I'm hoping we're gonna get some big fish, uh, but if not, it'll be a tight contest and it'll be hard to catch a limit. I'll tell you what, for the first pre-fish ABT bass competition day that I have experienced, that pre-fish was a difficult one. I had a lot of fun on Matt's boat, but I'm now scratching my head about what exactly to do. He's going to target the crankbait bite in the shade. We're boat number nine tomorrow, so from about 6.45 through to about 7.30 when the sun gets kind of established we're going to throw service close in at the edges after that we're going to mix it up with some twitch baits and some crank baits to see if i can get a hard body bite and then from there i don't know i'm just going to have to make it up but there is one thing that i probably want to try and do tomorrow and that is to keep it simple and keep it to the things that i know internally though i think it is going to be a mad grind tomorrow i think i'm just going to have to pound and power fish and move <sighs> and find out exactly what these bass want to eat. <laughs> Can't wait. Yeah. 
tell me how you pre fish went, first of all. To me, it was pretty productive. I thought it was good. Um, you don't want to catch all the big fish on your pre-fish day. You just want to you want to go into it and come out of it with a plan. And I've got a plan now, so yeah, cool. Um, yeah, there's just little subtle things. I guess little subtle things too that I picked up along the way, like depth. Fish were sitting, the bait they're eating, what they're sort of relating to, and how much work you got to put in. I think you just got to put you've got to put the work in. I don't think there's a specific bite time. I think I think there'll be obviously a better bite period first thing in the morning. You're definitely going to have the fish right up hunting and looking, but I think that's going to peter out fast like it did this morning as the sun comes up. The fish are just. The sun comes up, the fish go like this. Yeah. So. Yeah, I reckon that that first hour is going to be really crucial. How often does it change overnight? In the... Oh, it. I being a guide back in Queensland, I know that most of the time the fish are still there, but what they might do is they might have subtle changes in what they're eating. Um, you know, one day. They might eat a spoon really well, this is back in Queensland, and then the next day they might eat a plastic really well. Um, and it's it's amazing how quickly the fish change, but being a tournament angler, you have to also be just as quick to readjust. Mm. So you've always got to fish with an open mind and be mindful of what's happening around you. And uh, if I was to go out tomorrow, where would I find you at the start of the day? Um, well, what's, what's your plan? Yeah, so, so most likely I'd, I'd be more inclined to be fishing um, rocky structure that's shadowed. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and ch just depending on how many fish you've got, um, just chase that until you've got your five. I think, I believe that having five of any size is going to be a good start. Yeah. And then after that, see what happens. And a co-angler only needs three. My biggest thing is time management, i found, with same with guiding and same with tournament fishing. You've got to try and find an area that you can really dig in but still move around and not waste your time, you know what I mean? Like, you, you, you can really work an area thoroughly um, but have a large area to do it. I see so. what you're saying. So there you're going to have, like, fresh casts, unused water. Yeah. But it's an area that you can... Yeah tune yourself into yep yep tune yourself into and you can spend more than just a couple of casts there and, and get up and go like I'd, I'd, I'd rather be spending more time fishing than moving the yeah the longer I do it the more I just realize that you can start sometimes you get hooked up on where you should start and then mm. you know, I realize the two places at Blue Rock where I wanted to start I never even got anywhere near it was just like oh, no. oh, really? <laughs> It's funny you mention that, for coming from the kayak background, where you go and start your plan for days is crucial. Mm. When you've got a donk on the back of whatever engine, mm. you know, of whatever boat, mm. um, you can afford to mm. spend some gas going somewhere working out that it's not okay. And yeah, just yeah. Just somewhere else. Yep. Uh, it's not working. That, that happens so often, like you'll, you'll say, right, oh, this place is going to produce, you turn up and they've just vacated, and you still go, go somewhere else yeah. but yeah there's been a ton of times you, you'll hinge on somewhere and it doesn't produce but other times you're like if I'm not first there I'm screwed you, know, yeah. you can't get in there and someone else will get in there before you and you're like ah, they, they caught them I didn't but that happens yeah one of those tactical things eh let's go and have a beer eh yeah it's about that time yeah. righto thanks for that no thank you righto.
Well, the size, the size of the fish, I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> Oh, look at you. Look at you, got a lizard down there. Just trying to camouflage in, or frill neck. Oh, there's two of them there. They're enjoying each other. They're enjoying each other. <laughs> Red fin. How good's a surface bite though? Oh, I love us a good surface bite. Well, we're not completely fishless for the day, so that's that's okay. Well, I thought we just hit a few of these. See how we go for half hour. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I made a contract with someone last night. They were like, if you don't catch any fish, what I want you to see you do is throw a three and a half inch grub around. <laughs> I'm like, no, <laughs> never. But apparently, apparently that's a thing. Wow, how amazing fishing is this? Yeah, there's two of them chasing them. So we're here now. See those two there? Yep. And the lure is coming up. That lure's the third party at the top. Okay. You can see him looking at it. It's coming out. Yeah. Cool fishing. He's looking at it. He's playing with it. He's not he's not eating it. Oh, I, I can feel. Oh, I just tapped it. Oh, he's going for yours. He's going for yours. We've got I've got about four looking at mine now. Yeah. Oh! Yeah. Oh! Well, this is unexpected and very exciting at the same time. You can see them there. Yeah, yeah. yeah here we go. Oh! I should, I should, should keep it down. <laughs> Here's a th thing though, is that redfish? You won't know to catch one. Yeah, good, keep me there. So there I am, I brought one up. With me. Oh, I'll just move this to you for a sec. There's yours, there's one coming after it. Oh, I did it. Yeah, it came up all the way from the bottom. Yeah? Yeah, good, I can see, I saw that happen. Oh, I'm just kidding. Is it? Yeah. How good is it? Front, on the front. Oh, buddy. Well done, mate. Well done. Good man. Good man. How good is that? You're gonna have to steal some of that gulp off ya. Well, we wanted, I wanted to try something new. <laughs> Five of them, mate. That's what we want. Oh yeah, eight of them, let's go with that. Yours? Steve Morgan has weighed in one fish for five grams. Yep. Yeah.
Yeah. And he's got three, I think. Oh, really? So, he was tuned. Is this where you found him yesterday? Yeah. I can't see any fish down there. Are you targeting like a small school or something? Or? Singles. Singles? Yeah. There's a heap of, um, I've sort of moved off it a bit now, back over where you just come from. There's a heap of um, like lie downs and stumps. It looks like they've almost cut trees off. Yeah. You'll probably pick it up on a side scan. Like. Yeah, I can see him. Um, yeah, yesterday I could just drive to each one of them and there was fish all over it today there's still fish there but they'll just like i'm like pitching out to a fish and then he'll just like scoot like five meters straight to it and then just sit on it just knows it like just and he'll follow it all the way down he'll follow it all the way up i reckon i've had like two bites oh it's like, have you got anything, Kev? Oh, I had one bite, which I'm pretty sure was already lost the way out. I was going to move to that way for about 50, 60 metres. Yeah, cool. You alright, dude? I'll just drop a line, clunk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? It takes very long, okay? <laughs> 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 cameras are waterproof. Yeah. I just come out, I just want to film. <laughs> <laughs> I got my one fish, so I was like. Oh, you got one? Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, all right, done. <laughs> How big? 14 and a half. Wow. <laughs> Tell you what, just in general though, the, the bass comp's actually been quite good. I know the fishing hasn't been great with the amount of fish that we've got or the quantity of the size, but. Um, you know, I turned up to the boat ramp and knew nobody, uh, well, knew minimum amount of people, and someone was there helping me within a minute. Hey, do you want to do you want a hand back in the car in? Thanks very much for that, dude. And everyone's camped together. I really, I'm really vibing it. I guess that probably happens a little bit more in the bass uh, space, but in the marine space, because the towns are generally all local that we go to, you know, there is a. There is some house sharing and whatnot and caravan parking, but majority of the time um, people have got B&Bs in their own kind of place, which is of course sweet, but you just get a different atmosphere at these bass rounds. And you can see that. You can see the, the groups of guys with the armchairs out and the guys moving between. I rate that. I really do. I love, I love it. Dirty, filthy cat. <laughs> <laughs> 